Okay, down three little warm up here before day three. If you want to, go ahead and it'd be best for you just hit pause and do this yourself and then come back and check it. Hopefully I'm telling you welcome back. So, 5 times 4 is 20 equals 2x. Divide by 2, x is 10. 2x equals 40. Divide by 2, x is 20. Very important, the parentheses here, when we distribute. So we have, and because of room, I'm just going to go ahead and distribute now. 2 times 4x is 8x, and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 3 times 2x is 6x, and 3 times 1 is 3. Subtract 6x, add 2, and you get an answer of five halves. Again, don't forget your parentheses before you multiply. This one I won't stretch out because I do have the room now. So that's 7 times 3x plus 5 equals 3 times 18x plus 5. Distribute to both. 21x plus 35 equals 8 times 3 is 24, carry the 2, 54x plus, don't forget, 15. I'm going to subtract 21x and I'm going to subtract 15. You can do it in one line or two lines. That gives me 33x equals 2, 0, 20. Divide by 33, x equals 20 over 33. Ugly, but that's what it is. Okay, moving on to day 3. Similar polygons. So our goal is to understand similar polygons and their difference from congruent polygons. So we kind of reference this, especially when we're talking about that AAA rule that did not exist, because you can have a mean and a mini-me. And we talk about models and scale figures and miniature versions of things. So polygons are similar, and that's your symbol for similar. If corresponding angles are congruent, Think back to AAA, and the sides are proportional, hence why we're reviewing proportions. So here, all of the angles are the same. Okay? And even if they're not all the same, like let's say that these are, you know, one measurement, like so. But all the corresponding ones are the same. But the sides are proportional. And it's not always going to be whole numbers like double and triple and half, half and thirds. It may be something like two-thirds or three-fourths. And that's okay. That's what's called the scale factor. If two polygons are similar, the ratio of the lengths of their two corresponding sides is called the scale factor. Now, in this case, notice it says if L, M, and O is similar to QRST, what's the scale factor? What is X? Okay. Now, let's think about it. We want to find, just like we did before, QRST. We can line them up just like that. So LM corresponds to what? QR. Now, remember how we talked about the order in which you read them? So it says LM and O is similar to QRST. So the big one is being compared to the small one. And these are the little things you put from the outside to remind yourself. So that's talking about LM being compared to QR, which is 10 to 5, which 
which is 2. So the big one is 2 times the small one. Also, the small one is 1 half the big one. We can look either direction. So if this is 4, then this is going to be 2. And we could have also done it as a proportion. 10 compared to 5 equals 4 compared to our unknown. 10 x equals 20 x equals 2. Well, I meant to write. Use a scale factor to dilate a pre-image to a new image. So dilation is when you enlarge or shrink a figure. We've seen this picture from lesson 1. I'm oh, sorry, lesson 2 actually. Are they similar? Let's see. QRS, 0, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's my Q. R, negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 3, 1, 2, 3. There's R. And S is 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3. S. You really don't want to use a straight edge. Not bad. Now, it says... A new image after a dilation of one third. So we're going to divide everything by three. So again, zero divided by three is still zero. Six divided by three is two. So zero two is right here. That's my Q prime. Negative six divided by three, or times one third, is negative two. Negative three divided by three, negative one. So negative two, negative one. There's my R prime. And S prime, 6 divided by 3 is 2. Negative 3 divided by 3 again is negative 1. So 2, negative 1. There's my S prime. So after, since I changed each point with the same dilation, yes, they are similar. The angles did not change. When you write similar polygons, their corresponding vertices must be listed in the same order. Which is why we talked about before, you can do this trick. And then you can see that A corresponds to W. And B corresponds to X. And C corresponds to Y. And D corresponds to Z. That's why we do that little trick. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Complete each statement. Well, before I do that, I'm going to write underneath. E, F, G, H. Just to make my life easier. So the measure of angle E is, well, it's unknown. Well, let's see what E matches with. E matches with A. So if A is 53, then E is 53 degrees. A, B. So A, B, right here, and E, F are congruent sides, or proportional sides, sorry. Matching corresponding sides. A, D would correspond to E, H. You can also look at the picture. A, B corresponds to E, F. So those are the left sides. AD, which is the bottom, corresponds to EH, which is the bottom. Another way to look at it. But it's better to line them up, because sometimes the pictures can be reversed or rotate or something, and it's trickier that way. Well, the measure of angle B, what does it line up with? F. So F is 127, which means B is 127 degrees. GH and CD. So GH is here. C, D. F, G. So F to G would be B to C. And you got to keep the same order. Okay. You can do that right there. 
Okay, A, B, C, X, Y, Z. I'm going to write underneath. Take all the corresponding angles and write the portion for these sides. So, we can do that right up here. Angle A is congruent to angle X. Angle B is congruent to angle Y. And angle C is congruent <coughs> to angle Z. Now, sides AB, right here, is similar to XY. BC is similar to YZ. And A to the C, X to the Z. Similar. Determine if triangles are similar. If they are, write a similarity statement and give the ratio. Now the first thing I want to do though is to change these. It's going to be a little confusing having them be prime because if you notice those are congruent. But we have to say that A prime is congruent to C, and it's going to get really confusing. Um, so I'm going to go D, D, F. Now, let's find out what we know. Angle D, angle E, angle F. What are they congruent to based on the art question? Well, angle D with three marks is congruent to angle C. Angle E is congruent to angle B and F to A. So it doesn't always go A, B, C, D, E, F. In this case, it's A, B, C, F, E, D, or D, E, F, C, D, A. That's how it lined up. So now that we know those angles are congruent, we need to prove proportional sides. So let's look at DE. Okay, we're going from 3 to 2. So that's going to correspond with CB. Well, DE is 16 and CB is 12. Now, if we reduce that fraction by 4, we get 4 thirds, 4 to 3 ratio. Now, Let's go with EF. And EF going from 2 to 1 corresponds to BA. Well, EF is 20 and BA is 15. Now, if we reduce that fraction by 5, it ends up being four thirds. And the last one, DF, going from three to one, so that would be CA. DF is 24, and CA is 18. And if we break that down by six, again, we get a four to three ratio. So the big one, compared to the smaller one is 4 to 3. If we went the other direction, we did the small compared to the big, it would be 3 to 4. So now we're going to do a statement and say the triangle DEF is similar to triangle CBA. Because we've proven all the sides are proportional, constant ratio 4 to 3 or 3 to 4, in the direction, and all the angles are congruent. So we're going to say that ABC is congruent to XYZ. So we write it underneath just like that. It says it, um, find the value of X. Well, AB 
corresponds with x, y, which means 40 corresponds to x. BC corresponds to yz, and AC corresponds with y. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look for our constant ratio. That's where we have two numbers. So we're going to set up a ratio of 30 to 12 should be equal to 40 to x. Now what I like to do is set up a word wall on the outside and just keep it easy like big and small. And 30, let's say, is on the bottom or the right side. And 40 is on the top. Well, big right, 30. Small right, 12. Big top, 40. And big small top, x. And now, we solve. 30x equals 12 times 40. 40. So 30x equals 480, and we divide by 30, we get x is equal to 16. And all we have to do now is we can compare the ratios. You know, 30 to 12 divide by 6. That's five halves. Let's try with 40 and 16. Divide by 8, five halves. So that is a constant 5 to 2 ratio. They are proportional. Now, if you notice, it says that the two polygons are similar, the perimeters are proportional. But to do that, we need to find out what y is. So let's go over here, or we go to, we go to the bottom, whatever. And I'm going to set up a new word wall. And I'm going to do my big and small. And set up my proportion. And I'm going to use 30 and 12 again. So I'm going to use right. But then for y, I'm going to use the left. So big right is 30. Small right is 12. Big right is 35. Small left is my middle. So now I'm going to do 30x equals 35 times 12, which gives me 30x equals 420, divide by 30, and I get x is 14. So let's check out the proportions of the perimeters. Perimeter of Triangle ABC is 30 plus 35 plus 40, which equals 105. And the perimeter of triangle XYZ is equal to 12 plus 14 plus 16 which is equal to 42. So if I take 105 over 42, and I can divide out, but I, you don't see, you can try a smaller number, but I know that 21 goes in, and guess what? It's a 5 to 2 ratio, so that holds true. And our last bit of notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So the measure of angle E. And again, if you want to remind yourself, you know, A, E, D, H, and so forth, you can. So measure of angle E corresponds to angle A. This has to be 60. Measure of angle G. Not really enough information given here, so let's just say, since we don't like to assume, I'm going to throw a right angle in there. And since C corresponds to G, G is going to be 90 degrees. Okay. 
Angle B corresponds to F, so that's going to be 100 degrees. If angle D is 110, then angle H will also be 110 degrees. EH, well, we got to find our constant ratio. That's going to be on the bottom here. Now, you can set up the fractions, but if you can see, if you recognize the shortcut that the, well, it's kind of confusing, but the small one is three times the big one. That's a little backwards, but let's work with it. Let's say it was inches to feet or something. You know, I don't know. So, if this is five, this is going to be five times three, which is 15. I know it's backwards, let's just work with it. So the scale factor is three, or one third, depending on which direction you're going. FG, that's gonna be three times three, which is nine. And AB, that's going the other direction, so that's 21 divided by three, which is seven. And there we go, the fruit notes.